Hello, everyone. Dr. Yi here. We're moving along very nicely. We just have a few lessons left for the scientific reasoning, scientific explanation part of T's. So today, um, we're going to look at apply logic and the evidence to a scientific explanation. Now, we have covered this in T's 6, so there's not too much new information. So this is a quick uh, comparison of the two versions of T's for this particular lesson. Oops. So you can see the lesson titles are a little bit different, right? Previously, it's critique a scientific explanation, um, but now they call it apply um, logic and evidence to a scientific explanation. There is a little bit difference for the first learning objective. You can see that in T7, it specifically says that identify a conclusion based on the evidence provided in a chart, a graph, and text. So the evidence could in any of these three formats. Um, I don't think this is necessarily new, but uh, I do like it that it, it's being more specific now. And the rest of the learning goals are about identify um, the stated cause or effect um, for a scientific explanation and evaluate whether the evidence supports or doesn't support this particular scientific explanation. Okay, so everything else is pretty much the same. I do have a few notes here. As I mentioned, there's not a lot of change for this lesson, and I will cover most of the content in lesson 28 later, because there's a lot of overlap between these two lessons. So some of the content is covered later in lesson 28. I pointed out earlier that the scientific evidence could be in a chart, a graph, or a text, right? So um, text, I think everybody is pretty familiar with, but if the the data is in a chart or a graph, if that's something that you're not familiar with, you don't see a graph every day, right? Then you might want to get used to it, maybe find some uh, graphs to look at and see if you can correctly identify the information in the graph, just in case that the question has a graph instead of text. But I have noticed that all the relevant sample questions in the T's study manual use tables. Tables are a very common and very good way to present data. So right now, most of the sample questions rely on tables to present the evidence for you to make a decision whether the data supports the conclusion or not. Um, but again, this doesn't mean that every question you will see on your test will be using a table, right? Again, it could be a graph, could be a chart. So make sure you are familiar with any of these formats. So just in case that you're going to get a graph or a chart, let's look at a few common types of graphs to get you used to the different ways of data presentation. OK, so the first common type of graph is a bar graph. And there are a few key components. First of all, there might be a graph title. So in this graph, the title is age by alcohol status. So when there's a title, it, it, it makes it really easy for you to know what the graph is about, right? Um, so obviously this one is about the relationship between age and alcohol status. Now, if you have a graph title, that's great. If you don't, that's totally fine. You just need to look for the information in the X and Y axis. And that's the second step to get information about this graph. X axis is normally this horizontal axis. And Y axis is usually this vertical axis. OK, so let's pretend we don't have this graph title. So let's look at X axis first. X axis is labeled here H, right? And then obviously uh, you have several age groups. So the participants have been divided into several age groups. Okay, that's axis. Now, what about Y axis? It just says a frequency. And then there are some huge numbers on the axis. Now, normally a graph will accompany the text that describes the graph, right? 
So that's very common. And that's why sometimes the axes might not be labeled in detail, right? So as in this case, the Y axis just says a frequency. Now, in this case, you will have to use a little common sense what you know about this kind of uh, cases um, to interpret the graph. For frequency, that's how often something occurs, right? So now we're talking about alcohol status. When you move to the middle of the graph, these are kind of different groups of drinkers, right? And obviously they drink uh, different amounts, right? Yellow is a weekly drinker, purple is a monthly drinker, and green is a non-drinker. So the frequency is about these drinkers. And these are really huge numbers. So they can't really be about how much you drink, right? 5,000 mils or 10,000 mils or even, you know, gallons or pints, that, will, that might be a little bit too much. So without any information, my best guess for this is the frequency is the number of persons per a million people or per 10,000 people. Okay. So over here, this could be 5,000 persons per 10,000 people or per 100,000 people or per million people. So that's the frequency, uh, which is how many drinkers, how many people you find among a population. Now we can look at different colors and you can see for each bar graph, I'm just gonna use the tallest one so that it's easier to see the different colors. So over here, that's people who are 65 plus who do not drink, right? Okay, and then the frequency might be probably, that could be 16, 17,000 per million people, right, within this group. And then over here, that's people who are 65 plus who drink monthly. So they may have, um, let's say, eight ounce drink uh, per month. And how many people are in that group? So you can see how tall this purple bar is, right? So it starts from here about, let's say, 17,000 to over here, which is, let's say, 26,000. And over here, that's 17,000. Again, that's just um, approximate number, right? We're just kind of eyeballing the y-axis. So the total people or the total frequency for the purple portion is about 9,000, right? It just subtract the two numbers, 26,000 minus 17,000, that's about 9,000, right? So the frequency, again, in this age group for monthly drinker is 9,000 people per um, million people, if we use million people as the base. All right. Now, this bar graph is actually a little bit complicated than most of the bar graphs because most of the bar graphs do not have a different subgroups, subcategories in each bar. Usually, each bar just presents one thing. But for this particular graph, for each bar, you have three data sets, right? So it's more complicated. And I don't think any T's graphs will be more advanced than this. So if you can figure out what this graph is about and how to interpret the information, how to kind of extract information, I think you're good for any uh, graphs that you will see on T's. Between groups A and B, which group has more monthly drinkers? Okay, you have four seconds. All right, monthly drinkers are presented are represented by purple, right? So you need to check the purple portion of each graph. And group B, 55 to 64, has a wider or taller, depending on how you look at the bar graph, a taller portion of the purple group, right? So um, this age group, which is B, has more monthly drinkers. Now, I just want to mention that um, this is just a graph that I got from uh, Wiki Commons. So I can't say whether the data is reliable or not. 
It could be somebody who's using some made up data to create a, a bar graph. 